Today we're chatting all things rice, and most importantly, how to cook rice perfectly so that it's fluffy and tender. Learning how to cook rice is an essential skill in the kitchen, and the good news is that it's easy to master with a few tips and tricks, and the cooking hack that I'm gonna share with you. But in today's video, I think you might also learn a thing or two about rice varieties, colors, shapes, and sizes, as well as how to properly store and meal prep rice, because you know I'm all about the meal prep. I'm happy to partner with my friends at Lundberg today, which is the brand of rice that I have personally used for as long as I can remember, and I love that they have so many different varieties of rice that it makes it easy to incorporate into your everyday life in new and tasty ways, including the two new recipes that I'm gonna share with you at the end of the video. So, without further ado, let's dive in. There are more than 40,000 varieties of rice in the world, which is a lot, so to make things easier, rice is typically classified by length, and that's short, medium, and long. But here's something you may not know, and that's that the grain length is also an indicator of the final texture of the cooked rice. Short grain rice, like sushi rice or American short grain brown rice, will be stickier and clumped together when it's cooked, which makes it perfect for sushi and using chopsticks. Medium grain rice, like Arborio or Bomba, will be moist, tender, and fluffy with a little bit of stickiness and chewiness, which makes it perfect for risotto and paella. And long grain rice, like basmati or jasmine, will be really light and dry, and it won't clump together because of its lower starch content, so that makes it perfect for dishes like pilaf and biryani. And since we're on the topic of long grain rices, let's talk about another category of rice, which is aromatic rices, of which basmati and jasmine are a part of. When you cook these rices, they have this deliciously fragrant smell, with basmati being more nutty and jasmine being more sweet and floral. Rice can also be found in numerous colors, including red, black, and yes, even purple. But let's chat about the two most popular colors, which is brown rice and white rice. Brown rice is considered a whole grain because it keeps its germ and bran layers intact, and those layers also help to give it a more chewier and nuttier taste. White rice undergoes the entire milling process, which removes these outer layers, and what you're left with is the endosperm, which is bright and white in color. And since I know I'm gonna get asked the question of which type of rice is healthier, here's my answer. Brown rice does have more fiber and nutrients and a lower glycemic index, but white rice can be easier to digest for some, so if you have gut disorders or problems digesting things, white rice might be the way to go. No matter which you choose, they are both healthy and can be incorporated into part of a well-balanced and delicious diet, so choose your favorite. All right, now that you know those rice basics, let's get into cooking some rice. I'll measure out one cup of rice, and I'm using Lundberg's organic white long grain rice, which is fluffier than a basmati rice. The key to cooking rice that's not sticky or gummy is to make sure you give it a thorough rinse to remove all the starch that's on the surface of the rice. You can rinse it in a bowl with water where you replace and drain the water several times, or you can run it under the faucet in a strainer until the water runs clear. Today, I'm gonna show you two ways for cooking white rice, and the first method is the absorption method, or more traditional method. You'll add one cup of rinsed rice to a pot, and then add one and a half cups of water. Another tip for making perfect rice is to make sure you use the right-sized burner. A burner that's too big or too hot can cause bubbles and water to overflow the pot. Bring the pot to a boil, add the lid, and then immediately reduce the temperature to low. Set a timer for 15 minutes and make sure to not remove the lid or peek at all during the cooking process. Once the timer is up, I'll remove the pot from the heat and let it continue to steam with the lid on for about five to 10 minutes. Then all that's left to do is fluff up the rice with a fork and enjoy it. The second method for cooking rice is what I like to call the pasta method, and it's my favorite rice hack, as no measuring is required. Just fill a larger pot about halfway full with water and bring that to a boil on the stove. You'll once again rinse the rice, but this time you don't have to measure a specific amount. You can add as much or as little as you'd like, and I just eyeballed about a cup's worth. Add the rice to the boiling water, give it a stir, and reduce the heat to medium low. Now, you could set the timer for about 15 minutes, but honestly, I never do. 
I just use a large spoon and take a few grains out of the pot when I think it's getting close to being done and test it. And if it's not quite done, I'll keep cooking for another minute or two. The great thing about this method is that you can cook the rice to exactly the texture that you prefer, and you don't have to remember different ratios of water or cook time for different rice varieties. So this method also works great for brown rice. When the rice is done, just drain off any water like you would with pasta and add the rice back to the pot to let it steam for a few minutes. Now with this batch of rice, I'll show you how to meal prep and store it. Rice is a food item that can breed bacteria if it's left out for more than two hours at room temperature. So the key to storing a large batch of rice is to cool it quickly and then place it in the fridge or freezer immediately. To do that, I'll spread out the rice on a plate or sheet pan to help it cool down faster and then transfer it to a storage container once it's cooled. Mine is still a smidge warm today, which is fine. You just don't want it hot and steamy. You can store the rice for up to five days in the fridge or up to three months in the freezer. And for tips on reheating rice, make sure to check out all of the details on the blog post. But let's dive into a couple of easy and delicious rice recipes. And the first is cilantro lime rice. Add a tablespoon of oil to a pot and one minced garlic clove. Stir that for about 30 seconds and then add one cup of rinsed rice along with a half a teaspoon of salt and lightly toast the rice for a minute or so. Add one and a half cups of water or broth, give it a stir and bring it to a boil. Then add the lid, reduce the heat to low and cook the rice for 15 minutes. While the rice is cooking, you'll want to finely chop half a cup of cilantro leaves and juice and zest one lime. When the rice is done, fluff it up and transfer it to a bowl. Add the chopped cilantro and lime juice and also the zest from the lime, which I almost forgot, but thankfully remembered after I started stirring and mixing it all together. So I'm just gonna add that and then give it another stir. This cilantro lime rice is perfect not only as a flavorful side dish, but I also couldn't help myself to create a delicious carnitas burrito bowl at home, especially as I had leftover carnitas from last week's video. So I just added chopped romaine lettuce into a bowl and topped that with cilantro lime rice, black beans, carnitas, fajita veggies, homemade pico de gallo and guacamole, and I have separate videos for both of those, and then a little sprinkle of Monterey Jack cheese. Now that is one delicious lunch. But that burrito bowl wasn't actually my second recipe. My second recipe is homemade horchata, which is a delicious rice milk beverage from Mexico. To make it, add one cup of long grain white rice to a blender with four cups of water and two cinnamon sticks. Add the lid and blend on high for about a minute until the cinnamon sticks have pulverized down and the rice is blended. For the best tasting horchata, you do wanna let this sit in the fridge for four hours or overnight to let all of the flavors meld together. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna keep moving forward. Strain the horchata through a nut milk bag to remove any sediment from the rice and cinnamon, and I like to do this over a large measuring bowl so that it's easy to pour from. Then add two cups of your favorite milk, and I'm using my homemade almond milk, a third cup of maple syrup or other sweetener, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Give that a quick stir together and your horchata is done. To serve, pour it over a glass full of ice, and if you'd like to get fancy, sprinkle a little cinnamon on top or serve it with a cinnamon stick. It's creamy, flavorful, and very refreshing on a hot, sunny day. I hope you guys enjoyed today's rice tutorial and recipes, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, 
Share it with your family and friends, which always means a lot, and I will see you again in the next video.